so we got more gameplay, and I'm here to do an analysis of it, and I'm just gonna say this is the longest one and the most interesting one. We got some returning weapons, but also two of the brand new specials, and they look absolutely broken, so we're gonna get into it. All right, so first off, they have these little tags and stuff, which is just a nice visual detail, not much to say there, but what we do have immediately is more confirmed weapons returning. So first of all, we have the Octobrush and Slosher returning. Slosher having a slightly new look. Yes, I know all the weapons are likely to come back, but I'm still going to confirm the ones we see. And then on the opposite side, we end up getting a 52 and a Splatter Shop Pro. And we'll get to those two later because we know they're kits. So immediately when jumping in, we have a detail on how this spawn system is going to work. If you look at the Inklings themselves, they are covered in a little bit of white upon landing. Basically, they have invincibility for a little bit after you land when jumping in. So until this white part expires, they are completely invulnerable is the most likely outcome here. So that's how the jumps are going to be safe. It makes a lot of sense. This stage is the same one for the second trailer, but like I predicted, it was definitely in beta phase because it's been updated a ton here. And honestly, it looks way better, especially in mid. So 52 has a kit we got to talk about. Splash Wall Killer Whale 5.1. So if you're a Splatoon 1 veteran, this is basically the Splatoon 1 kit, but yep, A wall is back, and B, they immediately gave it to a 52 again. That is a ballsy move after K52. Another small thing is spectator mode. This is very clearly spectator mode, and there's even an icon in the top left corner. Looking at Pro, it has Crab Tank and a brand new sub weapon, which a lot of people were very confused on, but I think I get what it is now. So, it is a throwing dart. If you throw it, it locates someone. This is basically a point sensor rework. It might do a small amount of damage, it's hard to say, but that's not the only thing. Much like the original point sensor, it will also have a lingering effect. This is basically a small little tripwire where if you pass it, you'll get located. Do I think this is better than current point sensor? Probably because of the insane range, but if it doesn't do a small amount of damage, I think it's still kind of horrible. I have to be honest. Oh, and by the way, the splatter shot has suction bomb and trizuka. We already knew it had trizuka, but some of the kits were changed as we'll see later with the bow. And suction bomb is the same as Splatoon 1. So like with the 52, this could mean we could see a lot more kits honing back to their Splatoon 1 variants. Okay, so next up we have a brand new function of the bow that we've never seen before. So pay close attention to where the shots land as they actually have small explosions at the end of them. Now, this seems to be an absolutely tiny radius and the paint and everything else seems to be just as bad as before, so I don't think it's going to be that impactful, but it's still something that sets it a little bit apart and gives it a little bit more utility. So, you know, it's there, I guess. Anyway, the bow aside, we also get to see Trizuka in action, and I mean, come on, look at the special. It's so cool. And then immediately after, we see the big bubbler, which has some absolutely crazy changes. So first of all, shooting the bubble shield does not shrink its HP, but you'll notice it did still get shrunk. So what happened? Pay attention to the very top of the bubble shield. You can see that something hit the top of it. So the theory that the top of it is a vulnerability point is actually the correct one here, which I don't entirely mind. So you can decrease it by shooting at it. That is basically how it will work. And it seems like it actually doesn't shrink outside of taking damage at this point onward. So that's how it works. However, if you look at the center here, you notice that's a beacon. So it looks like you will also be able to give probably a maximum of two super jumps to the bubbler shield, which gives it some brand new utility if you set it up further, especially as a weapon like a roller. If you get in their side and set up the bubbler, you can have people jump directly inside a safe platform. Cool usage. Also, we see gear returning. I'm seeing a lot of people say missiles are confirmed because of the missile icon on special power, but no, I don't think that's how it works. Yes, I know I said missiles were coming in the first trailer, but I think that trailer was just a really old build, and we even have a new special that functions in a similar manner to missiles, so no, missiles are probably not happening. Next up, we get a look at a brand new special. By the way, Charger has Splat Bomb, and uh, so this sounds like Stingray at the start, and it's basically a vacuum that eats ink and then launches a Rainmaker shot. So this seems terrifying, and it's actually even more terrifying than you might think, because the Octobrush, you can barely tell, throws a bomb right there, and it totally eats the bomb too. So even sub-weapons do not work against this thing. I think this special has some interesting limitations though. It looks like the turning speed is somewhat limited, like with Stingray or with Ultra Stamp turning, for example. So you can see they don't turn left to the Slosher very fast when they commit to it. 
And also, the shot afterward seems to be the very end of the vacuum. Kind of like Ultra Stamp can only be thrown at the end. So, I would assume the way this works is that's your final attack after you've absorbed enough ink, and the power probably depends on how much you got. Now, is there a maximum? I sure hope so. Now, all of that looks good, but what I think could make it look broken is how it affects teammates. Look at this 52 being completely body blocked from damage. They are basically invincible. That is what I think could be problematic. You really are going to need to get behind or around this special. Fighting them from the front just isn't an option, unless if you have enough damage to fill it up, if that's even a thing. So, yes, I think this special is better than the previous five we have seen. Do I think it's broken? I don't know. It really depends on how stages are laid out and the mobility and the exact range and hitbox, but it does look incredibly strong. And that's not even the best one we've seen. <laughs> so next up we see the bow and I won't waste a lot of time, but A, it has a toxic mist actually closer to disruptor icon. We didn't really get to see much of the sub, but I would guess maybe it's a hybrid of mist and disruptor, but we don't really know. However, the special was changed as it used to have Trizuka and now it has Killer Whale 5.1. So even a weapon as staple as the bow can have its special change. So kits before, might be a little bit off the table, but not all of them are, as we'll see some of them are the same, like rollers. So next up, we get a look at Octobrush, which has Suction Zipcaster, probably one of the most perfect kits. The icon looks great, and we have a little small detail before I get to the Zipcaster itself. There's a little thing about it, and that's why I'm slowing it down. So you'll see they have this weird glow effect on them, but also you'll see when they get near the wall, they kind of become transparent here. And this is a huge quality of life change, because if you've ever played Splatoon, you've gone right next to a wall, you notice you can barely see yourself. So this is a very cool quality of life change that will actually allow you to see your character a little bit, and thus make fighting with your back against a wall way easier. Thank god. Uh, but anyway, you can see them zip cast multiple times, and we also get some visual confirmation that the ink tank drains the special. As you can see on the top right, it goes way faster when the octopus is flicking. We already knew this, but now it's confirmed. So, it does drain slowly via duration, but both the zip caster and the main weapon also use ink, which makes it faster before you recall. So we get to see Crab Tank, which has a cool sound effect here as the shots travel. And it looks like the shots actually get slightly faster, but I can't 100% confirm it. It might just be the sound effect, and it has a cool explosion afterward. Very nice. Also, a question a lot of people had is, could you heal in ball form? And yes, you can. The ink on their screen goes away a little bit while they're rolling around. So it does treat it like being in squid form, and you can recover your HP. So now we get a look at Killer Whale 5.1. Not too much is shown. The whales do follow you when you move, which is awesome, but they actually have a very short duration. It looks to be about exactly two seconds, which is basically the same as Splatoon 1 Killer Whale. So maybe they're more powerful than we thought. Being able to move with them a little bit is nice. Anyway, forget all of that. Uh, Slosher has Splat Bomb and Ink Strike Launcher. And, uh, Ink Strike Launcher. Let's talk about this goddamn thing. What the hell? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, another Splatoon 1 special coming back. That's four of them. So you see it has three ink strikes. It does a little thing, and then you throw it. There's the first one over there that launches, the second one, and the third one. They have a little animation with kind of a point sensor indicator before they go off, so there's definitely a good bit of time to react and stuff, and the ink strikes do seem smaller than their Splatoon 1 counterparts. Which is cool and all, but unlike Bomb Launcher, using these has almost no delay to throw them a sizable distance. Also, I love how the strikes go in the air, and then these are basically the things that tell them where to land. Look at that. I've seen some people think these might be cancelable by killing the little sub-weapon that's thrown, but I'm not sure, and there's not really a huge window, so it's hard to say. Either way, yes, this is the best special we've seen so far. I think it probably will need some tone back, mainly if you throw it a long distance, it should take wind-up like Bomb Launcher does. However, I don't think it's as bad as missiles because you have to more throw and commit to it rather than getting a whole map's worth of range, and it's only three of them instead of being able to missile the whole team, so it's not as bad but it is still very displace heavy. If Splatoon 3 has really good movement, it won't be as much of a problem as it is in Splatoon 2. So I'm not super worried about it. I do think it needs to be toned back a bit. Okay, so away from the nightmare fuel, Slosher's uh, slosh looks like it's thinner, but it's really just a visual thing. The hitbox and actual paint seems to be about the same. So it's more just making it line up more visually. Here's another example of the bubble shield being able to tank HP, by the way. Here we get a better visual of the Splat Bow explosions, but as you can see, very minimal, very close range damage, and after that, we get to see just how versatile that squid roll is. He does one there, they do one, and then you do another one. It's insane. Here we get to see an interesting part about the whole, uh, whatever this special is called, the vacuum. 
Um, they hold it for a little bit before they fire that Rainmaker shot, like actually a while. So maybe you can hold off on that shot a little bit, depending on the duration you have left. Overall, for the specials, I just want to point out a pattern now that we have even more of them, which is that it seems like that they're shorter duration-wise than the Splatoon 1 ones, and obviously have more interaction and back and forth, which are really good changes, so positive to see there. Finally, while I know this detail doesn't matter as much, can I just say I love this victory stuff that happens? showing cool stats about what you did, the animations playing one after another. It feels so much more vibrant and alive. It's a total 100% upgrade. Huge fan. So something else was shown off in the trailer I've been ignoring up until now. So let's do a brief flashback to February. Oh, and just wait, it gets 50 times more scary. Listen. So, uh, that, that's Armor's sound effect. So, honestly, this got a lot of people thinking about the concept of a parry and the squid roll being a parry. Not necessarily negating all damage, but what if it negated some of it? You can actually take a look at the pixels of ink damage at the bottom. It starts at 99, and after rolling through the ray, there is some damage effects, and it's 114. Honestly, being able to double squid roll and squid roll and surge and shoot after it is already pretty drastic, so I don't really see them adding a parry to it but I still think there's a technical possibility it could reduce damage. I just don't see it very likely. Yeah, so today the Japanese website confirmed that attacks from the other party are parried. It doesn't specify if it's invincible or not with a specific translation, but yes, it does to some extent mitigate damage. They are parries. We see this again in the new trailer with the squid roll. It does specify it's only for the squid roll, not the surge. And I mean, all I'm gonna say because I've done a full discussion on parrying I'll have in the description, this could potentially be amazing for the game and add more depth to fights, or it could potentially be problematic and break certain matchups, and we just have to wait and see for what happens. So Charizard pointed out about special points in Splatoon 3, because we have a few of those. 52 is 190p, the turf 4 counter still takes a bit to go up, but it gets it roughly around that time. We have the Crab Tank on Vanilla Pro at 200p, and we have the Trizuka at 200p. So, small thing, but points for specials might be a little bit higher in the next game, closer to 190, 200 for the default instead of 180, which, if true, Great. Splatoon NA is tweeted a bit, and we know the official name for the bow. This is called the Stringer, which can fire horizontally or vertically based on if they're firing when standing or jumping. If you've watched my bow analysis, you already know that, but it's pretty cool. We get a little bit of a visual of it, really just spinning it in a circle. This variant is called the Tri-Stringer, which can fire in three directions. So maybe the other bows aren't all tri-shots? It's hard to say, but we're definitely going to be getting more bows. It's its own weapon class, so... Yep, that's awesome. Also, Octo Expansion is available without purchasing Splatoon 2. So if you're someone who doesn't have Splatoon 2 and are thinking of getting Splatoon 3, please, please, please get Octo Expansion. It's so good. Finally, we have a few weapon demos. These don't have any audio, but Transform into Squid Form is about the same. I won't waste your time with it. Ink Brush, which we've already seen a bit. You can see that hairstyle really bounces and moves around a lot during the match, which is so cool. It's very animated. We got the bucket. I love the purple ink color. Definitely my favorite look out of all of the different buckets we have. There is the stringer in action. It looks like they fixed up the animation a bit, so it doesn't look like they're going through their back whenever they're shooting like it did in the OLED trailer. Awesome. However, my favorite is the Brella. It's no longer ugly. <gasps> look at it. It looks so beautiful. I'm definitely going to get like a blue set with this thing, or maybe I'll still do the same one I have. I don't know, but I love the look. And they both hold it a little bit differently as discovered by Opie. And the shield is a little bit bigger. We got a tiny buff. Let's go. And finally, we got the shooter, which, yep, it looks like a shooter. So that's everything. A lot more of the finer details. Two very amazing looking specials. I hope you all enjoyed this analysis. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. Tomorrow, I'm going to be going over a theory on how I think the direction of the game is going to go. And I'll have more content on this as we get closer to the release. So I'll see you guys in a future video.